the second year. Hope you enjoyed your holidays of the Eid. So today is the first slam in anatomy. So the first block is in the prime. So we'll start with that. Start with the the major endocrine gland in the body, so it's also called as the master gland, right? So we'll get into the details of or the anatomy of the master gland or the pituitary gland. So I hope you have a little idea about the pituitary gland where it is situated and all. So as this gland controls many of the other endocrine glands in the body, so this is called as the master gland, master gland. So this a very small gland, a very small gland. You, you, you might be knowing a peanut, you know, peanut. It's size of a, a peanut and weighs less than a gram, less than a gram. So maybe about 500 milligrams is the weight of the gland. Such a, a small gland, such a, a small gland. So actually the functions of this gland are not directly on its own control. So this gland itself is again controlled by something else that is the hypothalamus. So but still, still we call this pituitary as the muscle gland even though it is controlled by some other gland that is the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus controls this separations of the pituitary gland but still we call this pituitary gland as the muscle gland. Okay? So, this pituitary gland is a, a small bean shaped or peanut shaped size gland weighing about a pint of 5 grams situated at the base of the brain, base of the brain just like hanging like a small flower like an olive uh, down from the base of the brain that is from the hypothalamus. So let me say even the brain model also. As you can appreciate this, this small start is there, no? It's like the pedicle of a flower, you know, a small fruit hanging down from a small pedicle. This is what is a pedicle like structure, what we call it the pituitary stalk or the infundibulum. From this part, the pituitary gland, a small peanut sized gland, hangs down, hangs down and situated in the middle cranial fossa. So, you know that, so just recollect your first year knowledge of the cranial cavity. Cranial cavity. This is the anterior cranial fossa, this is the middle cranial fossa, and this is the posterior cranial fossa. So, in the middle cranial fossa, in the middle, you have a bone called as the sphenoid bone. So, in this, the sphenoid bone, you can see, I guess, you can appreciate this. Can you see this? So, this small fossa, what we call it as the pituitary fossa. Pituitary fossa, it's like a saddle, you know, saddle which you put on your the horse while riding. So this is called this portion of the sphenoid bone where the pituitary gland is situated is called as cella tarsica. What is it called as? Cella tarsica. So it resembles the saddle which is used in Turkey, you know, the country Turkey. So it resembles like the saddle is used in Turkey, that's why it's called as cella tarsica. Cella tarsica, it's like a saddle shape. So this center part of the cella tarsica is called as hypophyseal fossa. So and this Fossa is bridged by a fold of the dura mater, what we call it as the diaphragm. Yeah, what? First thing knowledge, diaphragm cella. What is that? Diaphragm cella. As it is bridging cella tarsica, it is called as diaphragm cella. So it is close from the brain below the diaphragm cella. Below the diaphragm cella. You find a small hole in the diaphragm cella through which the pituitary stalk passes through this stalk, okay, which connects the pituitary gland with the rest of the brain, that is the hypothalamus part, okay. So that is the situation of the pituitary gland. So where it is situated? The cella tarsica. The cella tarsica. In the cella tarsica. Yeah. Can you show it? Here, this is the cella tarsica. This is the cella. Don't record, just see it first. Yes, I have. Yeah. So that is the situation of the pituitary gland, situation of the pituitary gland. So even in this picture you can make out the same brain model. So this is what is the pituitary stalk from which the pituitary gland is 
hanging down that is situated in the cella thoracica. So that is the situation of the gland. So what is the size? Size of a peanut or a small bean. Okay, what is the weight? One gram. Less than gram. That is 0.5 grams. So before getting into that, again further details of the uh, gland. So first we should know the functions. You, I guess you already know the functions as it is called as the master gland. It regulates, it regulates the other endocrine gland, other endocrine glands. The gland itself is a endocrine gland. What do you mean by endocrine gland? Uh, secret direct to bloodstream. Into the bloodstream. So the, the other name for endocrine glands is? Ductless. ductless glands, very good. They are called as ductless glands. So they secrete their secretions Direct. directly into the blood swings. Like unlike that of uh, other glands, which are uh, that is the ducts, the gland, like salivary glands, salivary glands. So they have their own ducts through which their secretions are carried. So what are the secretions of that endocrine gland? Are called as hormones. Hormones, very good. So they are called as hormones. So this. Pituitary gland, it is the endocrine gland, it secretes hormones, it secretes various hormones which regulates other endocrine glands in the body like thyroid, adrenals and all, okay. So that's why it is also called as the master gland. So, so this gland is very important in many of the body functions like metabolism, growth, maturation, sexuality, reproduction, everything. So these hormones from the pituitary, they are important in all these body functions. What are they? What are they? The Gro growth. Growth. Okay. Growth the metabolism. Hormones. Then the reproduction, sexuality, everything. Okay. So they all depend on the functioning of the pituitary gland. Functioning of the pituitary gland. So such an important gland. So we must know where it is situated. Okay. And other details. Uh, the anatomy of the pituitary. So let's begin. Few uh, silent features of the pituitary gland. As I explained already, these are the details. Like. It's the size of a peanut, a weighs about less than a gram, 0.5 gram, situated in the cella chasica, which is there in the, in the sphenoid bone of the middle cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa, this cella chasica is close by a diaphragm cella through which the pituitary stalk pierces and then from the pituitary stalk you have the hanging of the pituitary gland, pituitary gland. So what else? So as I said, this gland is again controlled by secretions of the hypothalamus connected to the rest of the brain through so it will start to the hypothalamus. So this is again one more picture again showing the cranial cavity. Cranial cavity this is what is with the dura mater. This blue all is worth the dura mater. Okay. So this is what is the sphenoid bone part what I explained. Okay. So this is what you can see here is the pituitary stalk not the gland. Because this blue part is the diaphragm cella. Diaphragm cella. If you cut this diaphragm cella and then open you see the inside the pituitary gland. It's only the pituitary stalk which is connecting the hypothalamus to the gland. Here you have the dura mater that is the diaphragm cella. It's a fold of dura mater. Diaphragm cella is nothing but a fold of Dura mater, fold of dura mater. This is the middle cranial uh, cavity showing the diaphragm cella with the pituitary stalks. Can you see this? So this is the one more picture. So giving you idea about the situation of the gland. Then, so as you all know in anatomy what you study? First the situation of the gland and then about the relations. About the relations. So relations so up, down and then the sides. What are they? So if you see this picture, you will come to know, you can with this picture very well explain the relations. So this is the sphenoid bone, the cella dursica, okay, in this you have the, the gland, this is the pituitary gland. So here you have the bridging by the diaphragm cellae, it is the pituitary stalk, okay, pituitary stalk, the infant gibulum. So through which is the hanging of the pituitary gland. So this is what is the cella dursica, cella dursica, okay. So the capsule of the gland blends closely with the dura mater. So there is no absolutely no space between the gland and the dura. So whereas in the rest of the brain you find different spaces like subdural space, subarachnoid space and all where you have CSF and all. So there is no CSF covering this pituitary gland. Very important point. Keep in mind. Okay. So there is no space between the dura and then the capsule of the gland. They are closely tied together. So there is no space. Uh, there is no CSF 
uh, which is uh, what is that? Uh, uh, protecting the pituitary gland. Okay, this is what is the situation of the pituitary gland. So now on either side, what do you? What are these? Can anyone say? Sinus. Big sinuses. What are they? With sinus, not this. They are dural venous sinus. What is there in the middle cranial fossa? Here. What do you find? Which sinus? Sphenus. Uh, yeah, you're yeah, right. Cavernous sinus. Very good. So there's the cavernous sinus. So on either side of the pituitary gland, you have cavernous sinus, which is one of the paired dural venous sinus. Paired dural venous sinus. So this is on either side of the gland, lateral sides, you have the cavernous sinus. Two cavernous sinus on either side of the pituitary gland. And as you know, again the first year knowledge, the cavernous sinus contains very important nerves and as well as the artery, as well as the internal carotid artery. So these are the lateral relations. So what is above the gland? What are these? Above the gland. Yeah? You have two optic nerves coming and then joining. What is that point? Two optic nerves coming and mixing each other. Optic chiasma. What is that? Optic chiasma. So, pituitary gland, it is related on its upper side to the optic chiasma. Optic chiasma. What is there above the gland? You have the optic chiasma. Very important. On lateral side you have cavernous sinus with important cranial nerves and then the carotid artery. Carotid artery. Above you have the optic nerve and optic chiasma. So very important relations. So the importance of these relations will come to the uh, at the end of this uh, uh, lab. Okay. So what is below the gland? What are these? Within the sphenoid bone, what do you find? Sphenoid sinus. Sphenoid sinus. They are the air sinus. Don't confuse this venous sinuses with the air sinus. Air sinuses, these are paranasal air sinuses. Okay. So below the gland, within the sphenoid bone, you have Spinoidal air sinus. So just let me repeat or uh, what is that? Summarize the relations. So what is above the gland? Optic chiasma. What is on either side of the gland? Cavernous sinus, cranial nerve, and internal carotid artery. What is below the gland? Spinoidal air sinus. So these are the relations. So just you can. So this is the text of whatever the relations what I explained till now. Okay. So why these relations becomes very important is because whenever there is any tumor in the gland. Any tumor within the gland, so whenever there is this, this is a tumor is nothing but a mass occupying lesion, it enlarges. So then when it enlarges, it will have effect on surrounding structures, like right? it will have pressure on the optic nerves, optic chiasma, then the patient will have disturbance, vision, disturbance in the vision, headaches and all, because you have all the cranial nerves in the cavernous sinus, okay? So even it may cause bulging of the eyeball because internal carotid artery is there, cavernous sinus is there. Many of the ophthalmic veins they come and communicate with the cavernous sinus. So there is a blockage, then pulsating eyeballs. So eyeballs will bulge. So all those complications will occur. So that's the reason why we are supposed to know the pituitary uh, mean uh, relations. So this is the picture, nice picture explaining the relations of the gland. So now we'll go to the gland proper. So as I said, it's a small gland. So when you take a section of, actually we, we, we appreciate all these features the, uh, under the microscope. There are microscope because depending on the histological features, we divide the gland into mainly two parts. What are they? Anterior, Anterior lobe and then posterior lobe. So in other mammals, you find a clear, uh, what is that, intermediate lobe, but in humans, the presence of the intermediate lobe is not very clear, okay? So mainly you can remember it as three parts. What are they? Anterior lobe, posterior. then intermediate, and then the posterior lobe. Anterior, posterior, and intermediate. So what we call it as anterior pituitary is also called as adenohypophysis. Try to remember this word. So this pituitary gland, what is the other name for pituitary gland? Master, master, uh, no, no. Anatomical term. What? What is the other? Hypophysis cerebri, we call it as. So in the exams, it may not be, a, they may not ask you as pituitary gland, they may say as hypophysis cerebri. So you should not confuse what is hypophysis cerebri. What is hypophysis cerebri? It is the pituitary gland. The other name for pituitary gland is hypophysis cerebri. Why it is called hypophysis cerebri? Because it is under the brain. Hypophysis, below the brain. 
cerebrized brain. Hypophysis, cerebrized. Hypophysis, cerebrized, the other name for pituitary gland. So, anterior pituitary is also called as adenohypophysis because you have many, many cells secreting this hormones. Okay? So, that is adenohypophysis. Whereas, posterior is called as neurohypophysis where you have much of the nervous tissue rather than glandular tissue. That's why it is called as neurohypophysis where you have many of the nerve fibers. Whereas, here in the anterior pituitary you have glandular tissue that is cells secreting the hormones. That's what it is called as adeno. Adeno is the glandular tissue. Adenohypophysis. This is the neurohypophysis. So, anterior pituitary, posterior pituitary, then intermediate. So, intermediate separating that you have a, a cleft, a gap. A gap is there that is the cleft. So, anterior to this cleft is the anterior pituitary and between the cleft and the posterior pituitary you have the intermediate lobe. It is attached to the to close to the posterior pituitary. So there is a cleft here. Cleft means you understand the cleft, the word cleft, yes? So that is the gap. So anterior to this cleft is the anterior pituitary. Posterior to this cleft is the intermediate and then the posterior. Okay? So that are the three parts of the pituitary gland. So let us study part by part. So connecting these three, you have the Infantibulum are also called as the pituitary stalk. Above this, we have the hypothalamus. Clear? So this is again one more picture showing the parts of the pituitary gland. So before getting into, a, again you have, you will be learning the embryology or the development of the pituitary gland in a separate lecture. So, but still, I want to <coughs> highlight a few points here. So, regarding the anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary, they are functionally different and even embryological origin is also different. Okay? So, this anterior pituitary develops from the ectoderm, the external ectoderm. Okay? That is from the stomatodium, roof of the oral cavity as a pouch, it extends into the cranium, that is the rough case pouch we say. What is it? What is it called as? Rath case pouch, that is the ectoderm, somatic ectoderm. Whereas the neurohypophysis develops from the brain tissue, that is the neuroectoderm. So try to understand the difference here. Posterior pituitary develops from neuroectoderm, whereas anterior pituitary develops from the oral cavity, that is the ectoderm, somatic ectoderm, not the neuroectoderm. So, so posterior pituitary, neuroectoderm, anterior pituitary, the ectoderm, somatic ectoderm from the stomatodium. Clear? So, developmentally also they are different. Functionally also they are different. What is that pouch we call as? Rath case pouch. So, development of the pituitary. Try to remember. So, now we go to the individual part. First the anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary. So, anterior pituitary we consider here in humans the intermediate part is well part of the anterior pituitary. Because nothing of much functional significance except it is secreting the melanocyte stimulating hormone. Okay? So, we consider the intermediate part with the anterior. Okay? So, altogether the anterior pituitary or the adenohypophysis, adenohypophysis consists of three parts. What are they? Pars distalis, pars tuberalis and pars intermedia. Pars is nothing but part. Okay? Pars distalis, Pars tuberalis and pars intermediate. So these are the three parts. So much of the anterior pituitary consists of pars distalis. So many of the cells which secrete the anterior pituitary hormones, they are situated in the pars distalis. Pars distalis. So what are the three parts of anterior pituitary? Dos, distalis, uh, uh, tuberalis, intermediate. intermediate. Am I clear? These are three parts of anterior pituitary. So again, these are the hormones which are secreted by anterior pituitary, which you will learn in your physiology as well as histology class. Okay? I am not interested much in what are the secretions. Okay? So now the neurohypophysis. Neurohypophysis. So these are all the uh, histological differences. You will uh, you will appreciate the structure of the anterior pituitary and posterior uh, posterior pituitary in your histology classes. Okay? So posterior pituitary, as I said, it contains 
many of the nerve fibers, that is the axons which are coming from the yes. hypothalamus. So you have many nuclei in the hypothalamus. hypothalamus. From those hypothalamic nucleus, uh, the axons will run down and then settle in the posterior pituitary. They have the nerve terminals in which you have the secretory vesicles. They will be secreting the hormones. But but still the posterior pituitary pituitary is called as the muscle gland. Muscle. Still it is don't know why it is called because the hormones are directly coming from the hypothalamus. Just they are secreted in the posterior pituitary. These hormones which are secreted by the posterior pituitary, what we consider like your vasopressin and then the oxytocin. So they are secreted from the hypothalamus. Just they are carried through their axons and released in the posterior pituitary. As such, the hormones of the pituitary, posterior pituitary are not secreted by posterior pituitary. Am I clear? Yes. Again, again. Hormones of the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis, they are not secreted by posterior pituitary. They are coming from hypothalamus. I will show you the picture, you will understand. Yes, can you see here? This is the posterior pituitary, okay? Okay, see this. This is the hypothalamus. There are the nerve fibers, they are running down. Okay? So they are running down and coming, ending in the posterior pituitary. So these are the secretory vesicles. So they release the hormones and then from the blood it will go up. So just it's acting like a mediator. Actually it is not secreting. Posterior pituitary is not secreting these hormones. They are coming from the hypothalamus and released into the posterior pituitary. But we consider, consider that these hormones are secreted by posterior pituitary. But as such, they are secreted by hypothalamus. Am I clear? There is no cell posterior. Yeah? No cells. That's what I said. Very, very few amounts of cells you find which acts like what is that? Binding cells, like astrocytes, what are the pituocytes. So you find very few cells, many will be nerve fibers. Just nerve fibers coming from the hypothalamus. That's why it is called as neurohypophysis. Whereas anterior pituitary you have plenty of cells. It is called as adenohypophysis, whereas posterior pituitary is called as neurohypophysis because you have plenty. If you can see the in this picture, can you see this difference in the structure, histological structure? See here, this is completely black. You have many cells here, whereas here mainly the nerve fibers. You will appreciate this when you go to your study of the histological slides of pituitary. So that is about the posterior pituitary and the hormones secreted are vasopressin or ADH and then the oxytocin. So, so we are ending in the lab that is the, in the last part of any uh, uh, study in anatomy is its blood supply. right? So here the blood supply is very important. As I said the hypothalamus controls the pituitary. How exactly it controls the pituitary? So here you have uh, like you are, uh, I think uh, you studied uh, this portal system in the first year. Portal, portal system. Portal vein, liver and all this is third year I guess, okay. So there is a portal system, that means what? So this pituitary gland is supplied by mainly two vessels. What are they? Superior hypophysial artery and then Inferior hypophysial artery, two arteries. What are they? Superior, superior and inferior. So this is the inferior one and this is the superior one. So superior and inferior hypophysial artery. So why I am explaining this point is portal system means you have different sets of capillary networks. Capillary networks. See here, this super, uh, superior hypophysial artery it is branching. Okay. So here you have tufts of capillaries here. Groups of bunches of capillaries, tufts here. Okay, so this is what part? This is hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Okay, so here it supplies hypothalamus. So from that plexus, again the arteries are running. Veins. See, can you see this? The same blood which supplies hypothalamus, which also will also come to pituitary. That is anterior pituitary. So, how, so as I said, hypothalamus controls the pituitary. Okay, hypothalamus it releases hormones which are called as the releasing hormones. Releasing hormones. For example, anterior pituitary secretes growth hormone. Do you agree? Yes. 
growth hormone. So how this how this growth hormone secretion is regulated? From the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus. It secretes hypothalamus secretes growth, growth hormone, hormone releasing hormone. Growth hormone releasing hormone. hormone. So how that hormone reaches the pituitary? It is through this blood supply. The same blood supply. The same vessels which are supplying the hypothalamus will also come and supply. As you all know, hormones reach the target organs through blood. blood. So definitely, the blood from the hypothalamus, the same blood will go to pituitary, anterior pituitary. So this is called as the same vessels making two tufts of capillaries, one here and one here. So this system is called as portal system. It is called as portal system. Because the blood from hypothalamus, we have to reach the anterior pituitary. So this is the blood supply of the pituitary gland. Blood supply of the pituitary gland. And again from the vessels from the anterior pituitary, even go to posterior pituitary also. And much of which is from the inferior hypophysal artery. The small vessels, some of the vessels, they even communicate anterior and posterior pituitary. Okay, majority of the blood will come from hypothalamus. Am I clear here? So that's how hypothalamus controls the pituitary through the releasing hormones which are carried to the pituitary through this portal system. Through this portal system. What is that portal system called as? Hypophysial portal system. Or, I, or you can say it as hypothalamo hypophysial portal system. What is that? Hypothalamo hypophysial portal system. How hypothalamus regulates pituitary? Through through blood. Through, through, through hypothalamus, yeah. hypophysial portal system of vessels. Am I clear? So that is how is the blood supply of the pituitary gland through two vessels, which are branches from internal carotid. What are they? Superior and inferior hypophysial artery. And venous kinase is through the veins which will end in what are they on either side of the pituitary? Cavernous sign. Venous blood will enter into the cavernous sign. Am I clear? This is about the blood supply. So next go to the some of the disorders of the pituitary. The disorders which affect the pituitary. As I said, very important uh, diseases which affect pituitary gland are the pituitary tumors. Pituitary tumors. Macro, so mainly from the anterior pituitary. They are called as the pituitary adenomas. Mm -hmm. They are called as adenomas from the glandular tissue. Mainly they are benign, not cancerous. Okay. So when they enlarge, so as I said, they will have pressure effect on optic nerves as well as nerves within the cavernous sinus as well as the internal carotid artery, giving rise to all these symptoms what I explained already. So like, what is that? So you have bitemporal hemianopsia. So this temporal defects in the visual field. So you can't see the temporal side. So all those visual field defects you find when there is pressure on the Optic nerve, optic nerve. When there is pressure on the other optic nerves which are there in the cavernous sinus, you have different like tingling in the facial region, headaches, all those symptoms like that. Okay? And even ptosis, okay? And then uh, bulging of the eyeball because of the involvement of the cavernous sinus. Those are the signs and symptoms that the patient will have whenever he suffers from the pituitary gland tumors. There are other anomalies which are called as the developmental anomalies, so which you will learn when you go to the lecture on your what is that? Development of the pituitary gland. Okay. Sometimes you find empty cell artery. So there are other mass lesions which will uh, uh, which will reduce the size of the pituitary gland. As if you see, there is no pituitary gland. So that is called as empty cell artery syndrome. So different anomalies are there which you learn when you go to the uh, development of the uh, pituitary gland. Okay. So that's all about the pituitary gland. So at last, I will just summarize. So where is the situation of the pituitary gland? Cella The cella thoracica of the middle cranial fossa. This is on the sphenoid bone. What is the size? It's a peanut size. What is the weight? Less than a gram. It is 0.5 grams. How it is connected to the head? To the pituitary stalk or infundibulum. Called as infundibulum. What are the parts of the pituitary? Anterior vestibulum. I didn't know hypophysis. You know hypophysis. hypophysis. What is the blood supply? Severe. Tell the term what I explained. Uh, hypo hypophysis. Hypophysis. Uh, system. Hypophysial portal 
system. So, what is the neuroarpophyte consists of? Mainly the axons coming from the hypothalamic nucleus. Hypothalamic nucleus. So, adenohypophyse consists of many of the glandular tissue like acidophils, basophils, chromophils. You, you will learn when you go to histology classes. Am I clear? Yeah. That's all about the pituitary gland. Thank you.